CVEs are dying. The title is clickbait, but not really. Let's talk about it on this week's episode of ThreatWire. For every CVE that gets reported, the NVD, or National Vulnerability Database, usually generates a series of metadata and other important information that cybersecurity professionals use in their job to address said CVEs. It also provides the CVSS score, which helps those teams create priorities for the CVEs. The NVD originally started in 1999 and has gone through many iterations of change. However, now, operating as a project under the NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, it has gone almost completely silent. On February 12th, 2024, a mysterious banner popped up on the official NVD pages that stated the following. NIST is currently working to establish a consortium to address challenges in the NVD program and to develop improved tools and methods. You will temporarily see delays in the analysis efforts during this transition. We apologize for the inconvenience and ask for your patience as we work to improve the NVD program. That was over a month ago. Since then, the Linux kernel organization on its own has published hundreds of CVEs, but we're going to be covering that part in the next story. Anshore reports that only 42% of CVEs have been enriched by the NVND since the start of 2024. 6,171 CVEs have been identified and published, but only 3,625 have been supplemented. Looking at the graph on the screen, you can see that since the mysterious slow publishing warning appeared, the NVD basically stopped running. Why should we care? The CVSS score is the source of truth for many automated vulnerability scanners. They're left without guidance for remediation and exposed to vulnerabilities. I imagine that if you work at a company that provides vulnerability scans, you've already started looking for alternative sources of truth. For those of us who want to follow along the CVEs, I would recommend checking out Vulmon, VulDB, Vulners, Vulncheck, and the Rapid7 Attacker KB. In February, the Linux kernel organization was officially named a CNA, a CVE numbering authority. However, it's come with some heavy skepticism from the community. Let's talk about why. Decisions and discussions about the Linux kernel happen on specific mailing lists and forums. There have been many discussions about what is important for a CVE and what counts as a CVE for the Linux kernel organization. In the mailing list release of the patch to the documentation of the Linux kernel CVE process sent on February 13th, Greg Croa Hartman states, No CVEs will be assigned for unfixed security issues in the Linux kernel. Assignment will only happen after a fix is available, as it can be properly tracked that way by the git commit ID of the original fix. This is published now in the official Linux documentation process guide on the Linux project GitHub. However, it is slightly modified. No CVEs will be automatically assigned for unfixed security issues in the Linux kernel. Assignment will only automatically happen after a fix is available and applied to a stable kernel tree, and it will be tracked that way by the git commit ID of the original fix. According to a formal post by a Synopsys slash Black Duck team member on their customer platform, the Linux kernel organization has been producing hundreds of new CVEs every week due to these new changes and their different approach to CVEs. So what happened? In that same original CVE numbering process change that the Linux group adopted, Croa Hartman included the following. Note, due to the layer at which the Linux kernel is in a system, almost any bug might be exploitable to compromise the security of the kernel, but the possibility of exploitation is often not evident when the bug is fixed. Because of this, the CVE assignment team are overly cautious and assign CVE numbers to any bug fix that they identify. This explains the seemingly large number of CVEs that are issued by the Linux kernel team. This can be interpreted to say that now any bug related to the Linux kernel, severe or not, security related or not, is and will be numbered a CVE. Cisco finished the acquisition of Splunk. Just gonna admit that I've actually never been on the dark web. Looking to maybe change that soon, but I know and we know that you can buy a lot of different things there. One major market, incognito market, was a popular spot. In the past week, the admins pulled the plug on the market. They were looking to get out and leave with a bang. They froze all assets on the site and started posting ransom messages to all of the users. Expecting to hear the last of us yet? We got one final little nasty surprise for y'all. We have accumulated a list of private messages, transaction info, and order details over the years. 
You'll be surprised at the number of people that relied on our auto encrypt functionality. And by the way, your messages and transaction IDs were never actually deleted after the expiry. Surprise, surprise. Anyway, if anything were to leak to law enforcement, I guess nobody never slipped up. We'll be publishing the entire dump of 557,000 orders and 862,000 crypto transaction IDs at the end of May. Whether or not you and your customers' info is on that list is totally up to you. And yes, this is an extortion. As for the buyers, we'll be opening up a whitelist portal for them to remove their records as well in a few weeks. Thank you all for doing business with Incognito Market. Yes, I did just read the entire message, and they say it as it is. It's an extortion. Admins are looking to leave and are extorting buyers and sellers for anywhere from $100 to $20,000. The website now just has a list of the vendors who haven't paid the fees, so in their words, quote, you can see which vendors care about their customers. Admins of the site, as stated, are planning on posting seller data by the end of May, so there might be some interesting discoveries in the near future. Remember when I reported on the FCC requirements around telco data breach reporting requirements? The rules went into effect March 13th, and it seems like they might be put to good use in the next few days. Recently, on a dark web data leak forum, a user posted for free 73 million lines of data from AT&T users, including birth dates, social security numbers, names, addresses, and more. VX Underground and Bleeping Computer independently confirmed that the data is real data. The data is said to come from an alleged AT&T data sale that was attempted in 2021. However, AT&T is on the record stating that that data from 2021 is not from their specific systems. With this new regulation and publication of this mass amount of customer data, what will this mean for AT&T? How will this kind of regulation affect the disclosure? Kind of weird that it happens super close to that major AT&T outage. We will definitely look for any updates around the stories in the future. Now, I know I asked about covering CVEs and how to cover them in the last episode of Threatwire. Did I mean for this entire episode to be centered around CVEs? No, but that's just how the news cycle played out this week. I do appreciate all your feedback in the comment sections, and I actually went through and read each and every one live on my Twitch stream while writing this episode's Threatwire and did reply to some of them, so thank you so much for those comments. But I do have a question that is not related to CVEs. Are you a hiring manager in tech? What industry and what roles do you hire for? Right now, there is an extreme influx of talent in the hiring pools looking for jobs, and I'm not saying just to give us all your secrets, but I'm asking for you to share some knowledge of things that people might miss when going through the hiring process for a specific role so that those who are looking for jobs may learn something from you, not just from the show. So I look forward to seeing the answers and maybe I'll read some of the most interesting replies in the next episode of Threatwire. Thank you so much for watching Threatwire for the week of March 18th, 2024. Hop on over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash threatwire to help support this ad-free show. And I'm Allie Diamond. You can find me everywhere online at Ending with Allie. Good luck, have fun, and don't get caught. According to a formal post by a Synopsys slash Black Duck team member on their customer platform, the Linux, 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 Linux.